good afternoon good afternoon to one and all uh, we are welcome to this day 2 of virtual training session for virtual lab i once again welcome our resource person dr dorin madam over here thank you ma'am it was really wonderful session day 1 everyone learned new things and we are hoping for the continuation of it today and i also welcome all the participants gathered over here and there are many to join yet i welcome you all to this wonderful session of our virtual lab and request to the participants uh, the feedback form will be aired at the end of the sessions in the youtube live chat comment and you can fill it off and will be provided with the certificates according to the feedback thank you and over to you ma'am thank you thank you mohammed sir so i would like to welcome all the participants from mea engineering college kerala and different participants from different destination of the world who have joined through the youtube channel so hope uh, this is a continuation of a session what we had yesterday we had uh, about we introduced about we labs okay the virtual lab the what is the need what are the types of it right i can one of you put it on the chat session we saw three types of virtual lab let me check it out how how many of you are doing it what are the three types of labs we saw virtual lab youtube people you can put it on to your live chat and google meet viewers you can respond it on yes these are the departments i am asking what are the types of virtual lab generally we have the types of uh, virtual labs that we have is definitely yesterday we saw about computer science ece and mechanical what basically when you come into virtual lab we should be very clear about what are the types what are the different types of virtual lab we saw yesterday anybody remembers it let's wait for one or two minutes for you to recap and answer youtube viewers you can give your responses in your live chat basically we saw yesterday about the, the basic three uh, on the skeleton virtual lab there are three types one is the simulator based that is what is yes, thank you thank you mohammed fadil sir okay we saw about yes simulation based how do we model it it's not real but we simulated uh, the best example we are conducting a webinar right uh, we i'm not there physically with you you are not that physically with me but virtually we are able to do it simulating it is modeling based lab and the next is measurement based you we need to feed in the data for example do you remember yesterday we saw about the cad lab for the mechanical department we need to take the data we need to feed in the data according to the data measurement mix and the third is the highest level of virtual lab uh, say for example some institution if you take up cloud computing okay where they have the server resources available you go and remotely trigger the application to run uh, one example uh, how what is the space gmail needs okay if you how, how much is the space on the google drive that google gives what is the space google gives anybody when you open up your gmail what is the size of google drive 15 gb yes exactly right so when you go into your uh, uh, google drive it gives only 15 gb uh, do you own the 15 gb for the resources do you have the servers for the resources no a uh, gmail is there okay it, it provides uh, 15 gb for a normal g suite user and for example if you are having a google suite for education or google suite for enterprise all right then there is no much of limitations on your google drive we don't own a server for our mail all right we don't own our server for a mail uh, rather we from here i remotely trigger my when i give my username and password if it is correct it goes to a remote place all right it triggers the application if both are matching then my gmail opens 
okay that is also a kind it's virtually present somewhere uh, i don't know whether i have time otherwise maybe at the end if i time i'll show you how google's data center work okay even some videos are there available in my youtube channel you can also see to it okay how enormous is google a data center how enormous is facebook data center we are all using the application virtually we don't know how much effort they have designed to develop the algorithm to categorize a file whenever but we load a photos or whatever it is any time any data that we have in a gmail any time of a need we want to trigger the application and we want to see to it all right so that this is a real time application and supposingly if your institution is having a license software and if your institution is giving a username and password to the students so students right from home can be connected to the lab through the internet and they can pass in the parameters once the parameters are given in then all right then the application there will start running all right then it will be done and once it is done the students will be able to get the measurements right from their home that is a remote trigger labs okay remote trigger labs so these are the skeleton basic three labs yesterday we saw about for computer science for data structures and then you remember we saw about bubble sort and then uh, the different applications for digital lab then we saw how to use an and gate similarly for different gates and for mechanical department we saw about image processing okay how do you segment an image okay how do you segment an image all these are basically simulator based the autocad where we are able to feed it's mostly a simulator but we need to feed in the data to get it right so now i'm going to ask you a question okay instead we had it right how many of you tried uh, some algorithms that were there in vlabs yes no if your answer is yes uh can you tell me what are the experiments you try to explore it could be the same experiments whatever you have tried or it could be new let me get your responses please yes thank you densely so say anthony ma'am yes can you tell, respond me whether you tried using vlab.co.in? Have you tried to explore some application? Yes or no? If your answer is yes, can we tell you? Can you uh, share it on the chat box in Google Meet or in the YouTube uh, live chat? What is the experiment you try to explore or you try to investigate? Okay, Mohammed Musharraf, sir, you got into civil engineering. Okay, that's great to know. Others, please. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shamin. Yes. So some of you have tried and some of you have not tried. Maybe you're busy. But still, I wish you all to try today according to departments or any other departments. All right. So as we started our, our presentation uh, with VLAPS. Okay. Okay. The objectives and the types of VLAPs, okay, modulation based, measurement based, and uh, remotely triggered. When the scalability is less, then we go for modeling. When the scalability is more, then we go for remote triggered, right? So, a lot of colleges, a lot of colleges are using VLAPs and uh, they are of good use. Something is better than nothing. And even some institutions, right, if uh, they, they weren't able to implement it, what the professors are doing is that uh, the faculties are going to the institution, okay, uh, they are uh, uh, making a video of how the experiment is done 
okay step by step i hope most of you would have seen youtube videos for recipes for cooking basically okay many of you i i always say during this pandemic time a uh, youtube videos has become the best teacher for people right any doubts any doubts they go just into youtube and they try to explore either it could be cooking or cleaning or uh, making something right something new all right most of us the this pandemic had made a, a internet traffic of youtube heavy okay yes yes so like that many institutions are doing so yes you can take a video but they can only understand the concepts but they cannot have their hands in and they're not they'll not be able to explore now moving on to the virtual lab okay we we'll have and also and show you uh, some other labs available right yesterday there were some requests about uh, physics chemistry and biology by technology uh, let me try according to the time let me try so yesterday we tried about ece okay uh, computer science engineering uh, electrical and electrical engineering okay sorry uh, these two and mechanical today we'll move on to electrical engineering right so in electrical engineering there are different uh, uh, labs okay there are different labs okay so uh, first i'm going to take an experiment called as a parametric okay in virtual high voltage laboratory okay so in my e triple e electronic uh, and sorry in electrical engineering lab i am checking this lab called as virtual high voltage lab okay in that lab i'm taking an experiment called as a parametric analysis of impulse current waveform okay so this is uh, the theory of it okay so what is impulse current generation because you know electrical engineering it's basically with currents okay so how the generation of current waveforms of high magnitude find applications to work on with it it has got its research in these areas all right and then what is the theory behind it so current okay the current what is the formula all right and then hmm, how the circuits are being getting connected okay uh, this is one particular application it's one particular experiment so referring to the waveform the peak value is taken as 100% value so in the graph when it is generated we will be getting what is the peak value all right and then and what is objective uh, exponential impulsive current is for verification of current rating okay and current for determination of uh, residual voltage and then uh, there is a simulator this is a simulator that you'll be working on which is called as icg simulator okay which is called as icg simulator so this is the instruction okay this is a equivalent uh, a circuit diagram you take ec uh, students and triple e students they should be uh, well uh, versatile in writing their own circuit diagram even if from the circuit diagram they should be able to build up the circuits or if the circuit is given they should be able to generate uh, their own uh, circuit diagram so from the current supply sorry from the current supply and is a earthing device all right two is the earthing device you could see it here and capacitors with damping resistors all right where are the capacitors here they are it is in series okay capacitors and damping resistors firing pure gap uh, gap here and then they have your reactor coil okay and then the protective sphere gap and uh seven it takes the test specimen so in order to in order for the children for the students okay uh, to explore about this impulse current generator waveform there are rf rl and lf for first when you open the controller you can you, you can select okay and uh, the voltage is uh, current charging voltage is 50 it is given as default capacitor's value and if you want to change the resistor then you could change it okay what is the r1 value that you want to give you can give the students can change these values also and first step you have to select the first step you need to select which controller you want to work i'll try working with rf and after i complete it i want the participants to try the same experiment with the different uh, parameters all right 
and then the first step I have to click start the experiment so I'm doing my initialization to start my experiment once I do it the next step I need to ground the switch okay I'm grounding the switch and then once it is there, if you see in the circuit, you could have seen capacitors connected. So capacitors, I need to charge. So when I give, can you can you see here uh, the capacitor? It's all simulators, right? It's getting charged. So the capacitors are charged, and then it is turned to green. And now I'm going to start the generator. So once it, the generate, can you see the moments here? Yes, it has been done, and with the values whatever I've given uh, the graph has been generated can you see so I could take the peak value here here is the peak value all right I can save the graph the next time again yeah it comes in a PNG file and students can use it for the records once it is downloaded, I'll open it and show. So the R of value, see? What value I had given, according to the value, the graph has been generated. Now, I wish the participants to try the other parameters. R of I tried and I showed to you. All right? You can try for other parameters. You can increase the resistance. And it's the same thing. First, start the experiment. Then ground the switch, so the switch is grounded. Then you need to charge the capacitors so that the generator will be able to generate the current. Once the charging is done, then you can trigger uh, the generator. Then the, you can see there is an impulse here. Yeah, it has been generated. And like it's the graph. Okay, uh, let me wait for a few minutes. I want the participants both on Google Meet and the YouTube uh, to try for this particular experiment. Go to vlab.co.in, click on electrical engineering. All right, when you click on electrical engineering, I want you to select a virtual high voltage lab. Okay, uh, select virtual high voltage lab. Okay. After you select this lab, click on the list of experiments and then select the second experiment, parametric analysis of impulsive voltage waveform. And then you can directly go into the simulator. Then you will get this ICG simulator. Kindly try it out and let me know whether you're able to walk. It could look it could look simple. Yes, it is simple, but rather when you try to walk on with that, then you'll be able to explore, or if you find any difficulties, you can share it with me. Are you trying? Yes. So yesterday we saw about the computer science labs, data structures, image processing, and little of cryptography and network security. And in uh, EC department, we took about digital electronics lab. All right. And then in mechanical, we took an example of uh, a, a particular experiments in AutoCAD lab. This uh, today's webinar to, from yesterday and today, we focus more on uh, each department and at least one particular experiment in it. Don't worry, you are not an electrical engineer, but everybody can work. Okay, I always say uh, nobody has gone for a workshop to, to learn how to use Facebook or how to use WhatsApp. It's most on self-learning base. When virtual labs are mostly self-learning based. Maybe you need some pathway to know that is where I'm here to help you out for a little knowledge. What do I have? Anybody tried it out? You can type as yes, you tried, you were able to get the graph. Only thing you should need a device with the internet. That, that's it. That's it.
Yes, thank you, Musharraf sir. You tried it. Others, are you trying? Are you all with me? Yes, no. If you're trying it, type you're trying. Yes, you have tried it, Shamin. Thank you for this, sir. Okay, others. Keep trying it. So trying, uh, uh, it's uh, it's just taking one or two minutes for you to try it. Okay. So here you'll be able to understand uh, uh, more well. You are not trying. Okay. Some of you may be busy. No problem. Okay. So even in electrical engineering, they have got different sensors lab. So this sensor lab is for uh, biotechnology. What is the type of uh, speed you want? Then you can start the rotation. You can see how it, at that speed, how it is getting rotated. All right, how many seconds? Yeah, you're trying, Sanjay Sharma. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this is the level one calibration. Uh, so how many seconds it takes, you can see here. How many seconds it takes? It is for the bar sensor lab. Okay. Once it is done, yes, then you can start with your level two. So, what is the age to see the heartbeat range? Maybe six to 12. Okay. Heartbeat in this group are between 75 to 110. So once the age is increased, and then it's 6200. So level three. So what any kind of error? So drag the LED to read the errors. All right. So this is how it, the students will be going from level each level. And if they want to go to the previous level, also they can click this and go to the previous level. This is a simple example. Uh, for the uh, biosensor, the, simulating the performance of biosensor. So before doing this, the student should know what is a diode, what is an LED, all right. The light spectrums, right, the effects of various factors that affects the what is a false rate. So that is what you see, right, for the children, what would be the false rate for the adults, for the babies, all right. So this is how it, it it's a simulating environment which will enable uh, the children, the students to explore more about the biosensors, all right. Uh, uh, anybody has got any results from, for uh, the this experiment? Impulse, the parametric analysis of impulse current generator waveform. Yes, no, no, yes. Anybody tried? Okay. Some of you are trying, some of you are not All right. So is it clear till now? Whatever we have seen, we have seen two experiments in electrical engineering. Is it clear, yes or no? I want some responses from your side, please. Yes, no, no, yes. Or oh, still you're trying yeah, with Sanjay, sir. Sanjay, sir, you're still on it. Is there anybody you have got any doubts? Okay. Is there a provision for students to keep the digital records? Yes. As and when they simulated, they can take uh, uh, the uh, screenshots of the experiments and they can have on a word file. How do they do it? Each, how, how, when they change the variables, it could be taken as a record.
All right. So anybody is trying? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you, Sanjay, sir. Very able to, yeah, Prajit, you are clear. Thank you. Okay, so we will uh, move on uh, to the next experiment. All right. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to the physical science. Okay, there is another lab uh, uh, called like V labs and other lab, a praxi lab. How many of you have heard this word praxi lab? Yes or no? Kindly be quick. Have you tried exploring praxi labs? Yes, no, no, yes. Hello, you're able to hear me? No. Okay. Thank you. So uh, here, this is the praxi lab. Basically, you can use it for biology, uh, chemistry. These are the free equipments. How do you do? Uh, how do you do uh, the uh, experiment on titrations, right? And physics. Okay, densely, ma'am, you've already known about it. Thank you so much. Say, for example, if you want to do, do this experiment of free fall. Uh, like now, like Muhammad said, asked how the students can make the records. Okay, this is one such experiment. All right. No, yes. Okay, so how, where, how do you... Uh, find uh, uh, the uh, measurements. Okay. Uh, do you remember day one? I said I told you about these simulators are developed using the technology called as augmented reality or virtual reality, which is not. Yeah, you've tried it. Oh, ma'am. Nice, nice. Nice to hear from you. All right. So uh, here the experiment is set up. The students should trigger it. Then, according to Lee, it, the experiment will be measured and the graph will be generated. Okay, and this proxy lab uh, could be used maybe some of you from schools or also seeing it, it could be useful for you. Okay, so but it takes time to load because the software is a little heavy, so it takes time for us to load. Maybe one or two, I'd be able to uh, show it to you. Uh, in B labs, particularly most of them, you will be able to uh, you'll be able to see look, look through this. And for some simulators, the nodal centers, uh, they will have some uh, means of authentication. Okay, I'll upload a, a biotechnology. Okay, the bioreactor modeling lab. Okay. I'll see whether it has got loaded because it's little big. The software it takes little time. So, see some some labs uh, you need to do for a sign up. Okay, so for that example only I took this one. It is developed by Amrita, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pidham University. Okay. Just checking. Yeah, now it's ready. See, it is made with Unity. Unity is the software. Uh, when I was working uh, for an engineering college, right, 
uh, during my working experience. Now I'm mostly into research and development, right? At that time, one of my students, so I gave them an idea because every time students will come and give a complaint to me. Ma'am, being an HR, it's uh, very difficult to find you and we waste a lot of time uh, to figure it out where you are. So for that particular students, we gave an I gave an idea uh, through their uh, uh, through their interest also. So we, they used um, uh, like Unity. They used a software, okay, to develop a product. So if that application is on your mobile using the camera, the students will come out and um, just uh, take uh, my name board scan and it will tell me to take the latitude and longitude of my place so before i go and for an hod meeting or meeting with parents or any other work for class i will just type in my uh, location where i am because that application runs in my thing also i'll also type what is the time so when students come in they could figure it out so that application will take that ma'am is on a meeting and she'll be back at this time so approximate time the students can come and find it out so this is one of the application that we have done okay so this is uh, the example of proxy labs okay zoom in zoom out how to interact okay so you can also record a result, you can also show the result table. Okay, in this experiment, you are going to basically find the earth gravitational acceleration constant using an object in a free fall. So this is objective. So we are telling the students what are they going to do? Generally, we do it when we take our students to the lab. Uh, we, we will tell to the students uh, what we are going to do. All right. Okay, now the time is set up. Can you see there is a ball? I can keep at what uh, centimeter I need to have, maybe. And then I start. The ball falls down. The timing is taken. Now. So adjust the distance between the ball and to say some. What is the step the student should do? And then press the red on to release. It starts. Okay, now uh, I have to. Okay. These are the steps. I'm recording the data and now I'm adjusting it to the next level and I'll press the red button the ball falls down and then I have to record the data so once I record the data it is getting into the excel file I'll now move it to a lower level the ball falls down then I record the data then the ball has been reset again that's the final the ball falls down. I get the experimental results I had recorded the data. Okay, then I can show the table. So first I had in the centimeter, what is the time taken for the ball to fall? And the next is 57.3, what is the time taken? So I can easily say when uh, the distance increases, the uh, time also is increasing. So this is how you can enable the students uh, uh, to do uh, projects, uh, the labs, okay, and it could be recorded in Excel. And also, they give, in this application, they give a PDF. Okay, they give a PDF or an animated guide. How is the setting and what are the exercises? what the students so it will evaluate in the free fall whether an object falls with constant speed or with constant acceleration or no acceleration or most with uh, an average speed so this is one example of praxi labs okay i'll give one or two minutes uh, can you go to praxilabs.com 
the website is uh, praxilabs.com. It's an interactive virtual lab. This application is developed using Unity. You did it. Thank you, Chandra Kalamam. Thank you, Mr. sir. And if you're trying it, you can just type your try. So go to Praxy Labs. Okay, anybody's trying? Proxy Labs. Yes, no, no, yes. I'm initializing it for another chemistry walk. Okay, though you are not trying it, some of you are trying it, we'll be trying it. Thank you, Shamin. That's a good spirit. So try it, try it. So learning is always uh, more important. Okay, learning. Uh, it's not studying, it's learning. Okay, so there's a major difference between learning and studying. Okay, uh, learning is, uh, studying is, even though some professors are here, okay, they are trying it, Prajit, a good spirit, Prajit, right? So when you keep uh, trying it, uh, doing these experiments virtually, you are learning it, right? Thank you, Sultana. Just getting some time to get loaded. Uh, So, uh, how do they do, uh, yeah, feedback link, they'll be posting it, uh, Musharraf sir will be posting it, do not worry, until it is getting loaded, yeah, Praxy Labs, but, but little uh, difficulty is that it takes long time to load, but it's a beautiful event. So yesterday, some of them asked me, okay, uh, how, how, how to do, uh, for biological lab or uh, okay biomedicine okay biomedical so this is a uh, uh, similar simulation for biology or microbiology the website is labster.com okay the labster.com uh, what what is the students whether they are engineering uh, then you can select for engineering okay and uh, uh, for different things. For since I selected biology, it is coming all for biology. Uh, if it choose for engineering, this is another simulation tools, silo design, wastewater management. All right. So if I click it on. Uh, how it has been and then identifying the different parts. How for some it will be uh, like a video, okay? How it will be like a video, how it has been done. This is uh, regard to the environmental, okay? So all courses if you want to check, you can check what are the experiments uh, available.
with me say yeah this has come this is a chemistry one how do you do your titration the soda that contains the carbonic or crystal citric acids uh, so the sodium hydrochloride hydroxide reacts with the citric acid and it amines the citric acid okay and the uh, concentration in the soda beverage by titrating with sodium hydroxide in the presence of phenolphthalein phenolphthalein so they give you the objectives so what each time i should do will be given okay and the procedure will be given uh, first we will rinse the burette with two substances before starting so i need to take this solution and i need to clean the burette so the burette will be cleaned so after i clean it i take the beaker and keep okay i clean the burette by rinsing with the uh, uh, distilled water and discard the water and then uh, rinse with sodium hydroxide so i need to rinse with sodium hydroxide so to use sodium hydroxide i need to keep the funnel then take the sodium hydroxide so first i clean with distilled water cap it up okay now i can throw it then it is done now fill the burette with sodium hydroxide and record the reading now again i want to, to fill it with the uh, uh fill the burette with sodium hydroxide okay and then that is done Uh, so I should give how much ml? Maybe ten ml. Okay, I can define that ml. Then I we should use the soda. Soda is taken. Yeah. So accordingly. Uh, so they're asking to take uh, 25 ml so if and transfer it into the conical i've taken 10 i'm transferring it into the conical funnel so So they give uh, uh, each uh, steps how to do it using the paper. All right. We must add two or our two or. Uh, Drop or two of the substance, the solutions. So, adding the solution, and we must add a substance to the solution and shake it. So, so likewise, each uh, steps will be given, and accordingly, when the steps are given, it turns pink.
So it is shaking. And we need to record the endpoints. Okay, now it has been done. So your reading is 14. So can you see? So this is how powerful you need to go to a lab experiment uh, to do the titration. So these types of tools are providing a wide spectrum of how do you do your titration. I don't know some of you are professors seeing it. Do you remember how do you do your titration in a 12th standard and other sections, right? So this like Labster is also another application, okay? It's a simulation tool and which will enable you to go step by step, step by step to work on with experiments on simulation tools. All right, and um, so we have seen about uh, uh, different labs, the praxi labs. I showed you one example in physics and chemistry. There is also some experiments in biology. You can see, see to it. I'm, I will be, yeah, we have uh, 10 more minutes to go. Okay, do not worry, participants. You will definitely get your feedback link. Okay, so try to be for a while. So now I'm going to show you about um, uh, CK Interactive. Uh, is that any, anybody who have used the CK Interactive application? So which one, it's also a type of a virtual lab. Okay, it's a type of virtual lab before it is getting loaded. And I'll show you what are the virtual labs used in the different universities. Okay, labsland.com. If you want to take a screenshot or if you want to, uh, but this entire session will be all, uh, available in my YouTube live, in my YouTube channel. So like Lapsland, okay. Uh, Lapsland is another virtual lab that is used in the universities, right? Do not worry. My four o'clock, we will be completing it and you will be getting your feedbacks, okay? So how they use uh, real laboratories, uh, remote laboratories, okay? Uh, so you can also uh, try the labs, how they are working on with that. So like uh, FG, FPGA labs, the Arduino, okay, the robotic labs, okay, the electronics lab, Archimedes principles, okay? So this is used for in, the, uh, in uh, universities. You need to just register upon it. If you find it is better, then, then the NX app is labaids.com uh, and then uh, lab, uh, uh, in, lab in app.com com.resources, okay, and um, so these are, like VLAPS is what we have explored more because it provides a lot of free courses, okay, and um, this is for uh, computing services for virtual labs, okay, computing services, uh, hence.cmu.edu, uh, some of them they provide it, it's free, and for some, uh, then you need to pay for it. If you find it is useful, uh, then you can connect it. Every application, they give you a free version of it. If you explore it and if you like it, and same way pages.jh.edu, it's also a virtual lab for their institute. Some of them, they have developed it and giving it like for drilling for oil, right? Okay. And this for robotic arm control. Okay, how this is to be done? How do you practice your experiments? And they're given a free and uh, uh, even a hard experiments. All right. Uh, students and faculties can wait. Uh, MEA Engineering College has taken this effort to organize this webinar so that it will be useful for you. You will get your feedback links. It's like we write an exam. We wait for the result. We will definitely get our certificates. Same way is the webinars. Do not worry. Definitely you'll get your feedback link and you will get your certificates. Do not worry. It does not be chat till now. All right. Okay. And uh, like technology.ku.edu.in services. Uh, BU.edu. They are also providing virtual lab. And the next one that PITT.edu, 
and ALTBR. These are uh, different uh, uh, universities or different organizations that they provide uh, uh, virtual labs. For some, they're providing a free, of course. For some, in your, if you want to make VLAB to your class, please fill this form. So you fill it up. If there is some, uh, you try working on with that. If you, uh, if you think, uh, uh, please wait, Surya. Feedback link will not be posted virtually. It will be in real time in your YouTube live. But kindly have patience. You will definitely get it. Do not worry. That's what I say. When you write an exam, we wait for the results and for the certificates. Rightly, when you attend the webinar, you will definitely get the feedback link. Okay, and you'll be given time. Uh, this is uh, like uh, to uh, this is an, another way of uh, uh, art space VR. It's very beautiful. I worked on with it for some applications, and you can try using it. You can also develop on your own thing to how to interact with your students. It is having a mixed reality. All right. And then, uh, Praxi Labs, I told you, I showed you a demo for physics and chemistry and bacterial growth. Okay. And uh, this bioreactor. Okay. This is for biotechnology, okay, biotechnology uh, labs, okay, biotechnology labs. Uh, some, for some, they give animations also, how it really works on with that, okay. Uh, it's blocked, I will allow, then again, I will get it, reload it. So simultaneous measurement of specific growth or death rate of organisms. So how it is done? It's it, it it's an animation. So if before experiments, you were trying to trigger in Praxi Labs, you were trying to trigger the things, and it was working here. It is because the here this uh, shark. Shat virtual labs they've done everything how it is to be done like i told you right even like Musharraf sir said you go to the lab you take do the experiments and then do it for computer science people you can you you have all of you have come into the online classes so you can just share your screen ask your students uh, to do your lab experiments pattern with the programming and send it back and also I advise faculty members don't give one experiment uh, uh, generally for all the class in a class we have students those are above average average and below average so for one particular topic when i was uh, like i always advise uh, uh, people to give like three uh, three kind of exercises for uh, the same experiment okay the questions how we ask them to do it uh, say for example mm, uh, for uh, for a simple first level question will be answered by all even the below average students will find they will build up the confidence of doing it some students will have a kind of critical thinking so when they try with the second level of questions they'll be able to find it out how they could apply the knowledge that they have done Okay, the third level of questions when you ask uh, for your practical labs uh, should be analyses. Uh, uh, first is knowledge, what they do. Second is how do they apply. Third is analysis. Okay, if you take an algorithm, how do you compute your algorithm complexities? For example, computer science, because I belong to computer science. Same way you can, uh, uh, you can also ask your, uh, when you give a questions for a particular experiment i advise the faculty members don't give one experiment for all kindly find uh, the bubble sort for these values you, when it is computer science you can change the input data sets it's the same for other easy triple e and other things so like one thing is very simple everybody will be able to do it uh, and so next set of data sets will make the students they you give where they get an error how they'll be able to rectify it or where they have to apply some logics this will create an interest towards the students to do their practical experiments okay and and i'll just check whether the ck uh, 12 uh, almost we have covered with v labs yeah so here according to the subjects okay um basically if some of you from schools or other people are watching it uh the this will be very good according to the subjects and what are the classes they want to do 
uh, they'll be able to do and it's more of more kind of interactions okay it is a kind of interactions that it will be using this. so i've just uh, given you a list of uh, as we don't have yeah it's four and as we don't have much time okay so uh k12 dot org okay this is all about uh, other different sets i've showed you the list you can take the list whenever you are in free of time uh, you you can uh, go through it okay you can go through it and if you find it useful uh, yeah If you take for science, if you have your physical sciences, even if you find it interesting for your children, then you can do it. Okay, if I want to take a, like Newton's law of motion, okay, Newton's law of motion. So if I want to teach about frictions, so beautiful it is. How, how do you introduce the concept of frictions? Uh, kindly, Gopi Krishna, can you stop commenting, please? You will get the feedback link. So what is the force? How would it resist? All right. OK. So basically, we covered more with uh, the virtual labs of vlab.co.in. And we've seen about for computer science, uh, ECE, a triple E, mechanical, and uh, let's learn biotechnology, is right? And the other labs, you and I've given you the list. OK, I've given you the list, whatever the list that you need to uh, see and explore for other virtual labs that is available around the world in different universities. Some of them, they give it as free cost to them, and others, they have uh, some cost that is incurred with that. So I hope this, and then we saw about proxy labs, how it has been used, that is used using Unity. Thank you for joining. Over to Musharraf, sir. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Doni, ma'am, for joining with us. Thank you for your valuable time initially. I uh, would like to hand over a token of love from uh, our student branch side to our honorable resource person, Ms. Dor Ms. Dorin, madam, Dr. Doreen, madam. Okay. Uh, request Mr. Fawad, could you please display it on screen? I'll, and uh, I will stop presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, uh, the feedback link will be displayed over here in the screen for all the participants. And uh, short and crispy, you can uh, search it on and uh, provide your feedback. We cannot post it on the chat box. I don't know. There is some technical issues or certain technical errors. And uh, Feedback link will be displayed by Mr. Fawad, and you can do it on. There will be, there, you, will be, you will get ample of time to fill it up. Could you please display it, Fawad? Yeah, can, yeah, it is. It is not able to uh, paste it up. So I, I'll copy and paste it. Yeah, it's there in the chat box, man. Yeah, yeah, I'll just... Uh, Paste it onto the uh, YouTube link. Sorry. Oops, it is another link. YouTube viewers, just wait for a minute. I'll, I'll copy the link. Just check it out whether you're getting it. The feedback link. Yeah, it has been got. Yeah, yeah. And I've also posted it uh, on the screen too. So participants, we have got 71 participants. All right, right. And yeah, the feedback link works perfect. And it's very simple feedback. All right. 
Thank you for joining. Kindly subscribe to the channel if you like the session, like this video. And uh, so further, whenever I come online, you'll be able to get your messages whenever I come online. And different series about data sciences, machine learning, deep learning technologies, and uh, everything. I've, uh, I've been hosting out a couple of maybe, I think, 30 plus lectures I had given uh, during this session, during this pandemic alone. Even before I was doing it, but during pandemic, more sessions I have addressed. If it is fine, if you find it useful, or if you find uh, uh, any of your friends or relatives they need uh, it useful, uh, then uh, kindly share uh, the link to them, which will be of use for them. It's uh, we are just sharing the knowledge, whatever we have. Okay, I'm just sharing what we have. Uh, so even these two-day session, entire sessions are there uh, available on the YouTube uh, link. So so many of you are show the list of VLAB. Now I'll just show you the list. Sir. Do not worry. I'll show you the list. I will share. Uh, this is uh, my YouTube channel. So if you find it interesting. You can just uh, get it and it should be of use. I'll just show you uh, like as Manoj sir has requested. If you want, you can take a screenshot or whatever it is. The list of institutions. Able to get it, sir, or not, sir? Online. Okay, ma'am. I think okay. hope participants have been filling the feedback form. Okay. So we'll it soon. Okay. And thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again for joining with us with your valuable time. It was Welcome. quite, quite more informative. And thank you, one. We are from all over. Thank you. Thank you, Musharraf, sir. Thank you for uh, organizing this event on behalf of Computation Intelligence Research Foundation. So you can all see in my website, cirf.co.in, uh, is the website of my institution. So we are opening for uh, uh, some uh, uh, internships. Okay, It's a free internship. And if you are strong in technology, any of your students are strong in technologies, they could apply for the internship. Or supposingly, if the students uh, uh, find uh, it's a little difficult uh, to learn technologies, we basically train the students on technology. And we provide them a hands-on session uh, on training them. After that, uh, the students, uh, they build the projects on their own. If any of you are watching this YouTube live, we are starting our uh, internship session uh, this first week of October for students for 20 hour session. Okay, it's only only for students, not for faculties, not for research scholars. It's only for uh, students. Okay, any of your students who want to learn Python or data sciences using Python could apply uh, from uh, the from our website from our website carf.co.in. All right, so the applications are open, uh, then it will start off. It's only for students, not for faculties. In addition, in the, from CIRO, uh, we give uh, help uh, for research scholars. We don't develop projects. We help them and guide them. We train them, and they develop projects on their own. All right, thank you all for joining. Thank you for this opportunity given. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.